Hey guys, MEP guy here, and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to create a really cool custom pipe tag. Now this is one of the floor plans on a sheet I created for my new course construction documentation. I show you guys how to do all of this stuff. We talk about all of the workflows that I use to tag very efficiently and cleanly. I show you guys how to manipulate your views so maybe you can create something like this where you're hiding all of your piping in these areas, creating partial plans, also doing the same thing but for just the domestic water system. And in this sheet I have a technique that I think is pretty cool where you cut your drawing and then you can use a reference or view reference to show where it's going. So this is detail number two, or sorry, it means reference detail number two right up here. And you can see this one saying reference detail number one, which is down here. So a lot of cool little methods and tips and tricks. Here's my sanitary vent sheet. And you can see all the tagging looks really clean and nice. And I show you guys how to do this really, really quickly because I'm all about speed. And last but not least, we go over how to create very clean and nice isometrics and riser diagrams. Here's the domestic water showing a bunch of different techniques, maybe tags like this. You really can do anything in Revit, so I like to show everything to you guys. And the last riser diagram is the sanitary vent, and I did things a little differently. I cut up the views so that way we could fit everything on one drawing at this scale, which is a common problem, making sure everything can fit and look neat and clean. And I try to show all the techniques that I can ever imagine of doing inside of Revit. Now let's go back to P100. Let's zoom in over here and I really want to talk about using leader tags. Now one of my subscribers the other day commented on my video and said, can we create a fixed landing length for our pipe tags? Or I guess tags in general. And I thought that was a pretty easy thing to do so I went ahead and I built it. And that's what I want to do in this video. I want to show you guys how I built it. How cool some of the functionality that I built into them. And so let's get started. So I'm gonna go up to File, New, Family, Annotations, and we're gonna create a generic annotation right from scratch. So let's just delete this box. I'm gonna go up here to Family Category and Parameters. We're gonna scroll down and change it to Pipe Tags. Now before I click OK, you'll see there's a little parameter value down here called Rotate with Component. And so if you're drawing pipes and stuff, if you want the tags to rotate with the piping, you'd want to make sure that's checked. But for this, we don't need it. So we're going to click OK. Now, anytime we're tagging anything in Revit, basically what we're doing is we're taking information from that element. In this case, it's a pipe. So if we want to take out information from objects, we need to use a label. So I'm going to go to Create, Label, and we're going to zoom way in here. And then I'm just gonna click right to the center. Now here are all the parameters that a pipe can contain. We're gonna go down and maybe add size. And for the sample value, I'm just gonna change that to four inches. Then we might also wanna add the system abbreviation. So let's add that in. We'll make the sample value CW for cold water. I'm gonna click OK. And we zoomed way in, so I need to zoom back out. And there you go, there's our tag. Now let's go ahead and load this into the project. Usually before you do that, you want to save it, but I'm going to be lazy and just do it. Now let's go to the P100 sheet. Let's double click into this view and let's go ahead and start using that new tag that we just created. So I'm actually going to do it a little different. I'm going to look for that family I just created and we have to type in family because that's what it started with. And this is case sensitive, by the way, we'll hit next. You can see that little family two that I created is right here. So I'm going to close this. And then I'm going to click this little plus and I'm just going to drag family two into this project right here. But before I do that, let me go ahead and rename it finally. And let's just call it pipe size tag. Now it moves down. I got to go find it. There it is. And the first type will make an arrow. So I'm just going to drag arrow into the screen right here and it will automatically start my annotation tagging. So that's a really cool technique you can use to quickly find your tag and pull it into the drawing. There's no need to go up to annotate and do all that stuff. So let's just go ahead and click right here into this pipe. And the first thing we might want to do is we might want to give this thing, I don't know, a dot or an arrow. And since this one's called arrow, let's go ahead and give it an arrow. Maybe arrow filled 20 degrees. That looks good. And there is my tag. 
Now that we have the tag in the view, we could right click and create similar. And this time let's not use a leader. And remember that rotate with component was not checked. So you can see if I try to use the tag in between the pipes, it's not really gonna work. So these are specifically for leaders. And when they click, it goes just like that. We can click this one right here, change it to free end, and then we could drag this up if we wanted, maybe zoom out, and we could just move this just like that. Now we might wanna move this down a little bit and maybe move this to the left. Now you can see Revit will line these up right justified. And so good for good measure, let's go ahead and create another one right here. And let's like really line these up. So I'll use my arrow keys and let's change this tag to this pipe over here. And now we look pretty good. So let's go ahead and create a new landing line that is a specific length. So let's go into the family. Anytime you wanna go into a family, you can actually just double click on it. And it opens up my pipe size tag right here. We can actually get rid of this family number two because it doesn't need to live anywhere. And now let's go ahead and zoom in. And for this, I'm gonna actually change the justification to the right. I'm gonna move this guy over and I'm gonna draw in a line. And I wanna get it at 330 seconds, but I can't. So I'm gonna click and then I'm just gonna change the size right here. I gotta move that over and I can just drag it over until it snaps, just like that. And I only really want half of this line. So I can do it a couple different ways. I could take this and I can say equals over two, and then I could move this over. That looks good. Or what I could have done is I could have created another line from the middle and then just move this back. Let's just delete this. And now we got our nice landing line that is half the height of the text, which is 332nd. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the text a little closer until we're about touching. And then I gotta move this over 364. I'm actually gonna move or change this into an L so I could see how that would look. So I need to remeasure this a little bit, maybe there, and we'll move that back. That looks great. Doing a little extra cleanup. So there's my landing line. And now we could load this back into the project. We'll overwrite the existing. And as you can see, my little landing line moved my text over to the left, which is great. Now, if we try to move this, it looks fine. But if we do free end, oh, that looks fine too. Okay, that works. And it's just working, so that's good. Now, I might want to line these up a little better. There we go. Now, we need to get rid of this little section. So here's a little trick for you guys. If you drag that into the exact same location as where that little leader is, the grip will disappear and now you have your landing line that's perfect anywhere you go. Now I actually like it a little longer than this, so I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna make it twice the size. So I'm just gonna draw a line that's twice as big. I'm gonna load it back in, and we will overwrite the existing version. And as you can see, it is working fine. I gotta do the same thing for this one. Let's just drag it back into the middle point here. You can see it snaps back over here. And let's just drag this one back up. Now the cool thing about this tag is if we use attached end, what we can do is we can get them all exactly bending at the same time, which is really cool. So I can do a bunch of different things. I could preview a bunch of different views and it's just really flexible. But you'll notice that when I put it over here, I have a line over here, so that's no good. So I have to do something else. Let's go back to the family. And I think what we need to do is we need to make one for a right leader and one for a left leader. So let's do that. Now, I wonder if we could just select all this stuff, maybe not the reference planes, and just mirror them, and we'll make a copy, and click. Now we got two more. Let's click on our newly created label and landing line. And I'm noticing we might want to line this up a little better with the center, but I really don't think it matters that much, honestly. Now, these two elements are for when the leader is on the left, so let's go ahead and add a parameter for the visibility. We'll call it left. Now I'm not sure if we wanna make it a type or an instance, so we'll figure that out later. We'll just leave it as a type for now. We'll click okay. And now let's select the other two. We're gonna add a similar visibility parameter. We're gonna call it right leader. We'll leave it a type. And now we got some parameters here and let's add a new name to this, right arrow. 
And on right arrow, we want the right leader to be showing. Let's create another one. We'll call this left arrow. And for the left, guess what? We want the left on. We'll click OK. And let's test these out. So we'll load them back in. We'll overwrite the existing parameter values. And look at that. Hopefully these are left. They just say arrow. Oh, so we still have one called arrow. So let's go ahead and delete that one. Let's change this one to left though. You'll notice that I don't have my arrows yet. So let's go ahead and add them. Make it 20. There we go. So I now have these tags and I can move them around. And these are going to be the left side ones. But if I want the right size, all I would have to do is go like this. And they look a little incorrect right now, but all we have to do is change them to right arrow. Looks like we lost the other ones. Go to edit type, make sure we use the arrow fit. And there we go, we got that tag. Now I know we lost them, but that's okay guys. We can create similar. And now that we got these, what we can do is quickly just move them aligned. We'll move these two up. And now we got them back. Now the next cool trick would be, I might wanna move all these arrows a little further down. Let's select them, change them to free end, zoom out, and now if we use our arrow keys, look at that, we can move the arrows. Maybe we wanna move this arrow up a little bit so it's a little more even, and maybe move this one down, and we'll just use our arrow keys to move them all, maybe to something like this. I had to clean these up a little bit. So those are really cool, they work great. Let's go ahead and create what we did up here using the same concept. We'll just select them all, and then we'll hold shift and get rid of these tags, and then we'll filter and make sure we don't have anything else selected. Now that we got the pipe tags, let's just delete them. And I'm gonna use a technique that I go over a lot in my course. We're gonna go up to annotate, tag all. We're gonna make sure we set it right, use our leader, and we're gonna click okay. Now it doesn't look like much, but if we select all of them, we zoom out, and we move them. Wow, wasn't that easy? That was pretty easy. And now we can move them all into place, maybe something like this, perfect. Let's zoom out, and would you look at that? That was fast. So if you guys are interested in getting all of these tags and learning all of my workflows for creating drawings or specifically construction documents, make sure to check out my course, Plumbing 201, Construction Documentation. I'll give you guys a little preview of everything that we go over again. You can see we got some really nice and clean floor plans created here using really nice techniques. And we go over how to create riser diagrams and isometrics and how to manipulate the different views on your sheets to get exactly what you're looking for. And all of this stuff will come with my custom plumbing fixtures and how to use them. For instance, if you don't want to show plumbing fixtures in this view, let's simply turn them off. Would you look at that? And we still have our tags. Let's select all of these tags. Let's not forget this one. And let's just move them into place. Just like that. We got our nice carriers looking nice. We got our vents looking nice. And let's do the same thing for the labs. And let's just move them a little closer. That looks pretty good, I like that. So it's really up to you on how you guys wanna do things. I show all of this in my course. And I look forward to working with all of you. Thanks guys, bye.